Hello everyone, today we're going to look at graphs. We're going to look at three different types. The first one is the bar graph. So here's an example of a bar graph. Um, the title is favorite type of book. And a bar graph is discrete data, so into different categories. So we have sci-fi, fantasy, biography, comedy, true crime, and horror. So each of my things on the x-axis are a different category. And then on the y-axis is the number of people that chose that type of book as their favorite. Some things to keep in mind when creating a bar graph. You have to start at zero, and they also have to be um, increasing in the same amount. So I can't have zero, then 30, then 31, 32, 33, 34. They have to be evenly spaced. So if you notice, mine goes by two. So it's very, very important that you start at zero and you go consistently. You cannot have a jump from zero to some number and then go by different amounts. Okay. Uh, the bars have to be separate and the bars have to be of equal width. So if you're doing this by hand, you know, I don't need you to take out a, a ruler or something. Um, just make sure that they're not, you know, completely separate. Um, sizes. So you're not going to have something like, whoops, like this wide and then that wide and then that wide, right? You want to make sure that you're consistent with the widths. So I could ask questions. So this is the same graph from before. Uh, what book type is the most favored? So that's questions asking, you know, which book type did most people say is their favorite? So I look at the graph and I'm looking for uh, the highest, which is 12. So sci-fi would be your answer for that first one. How many chose bio or true crime? So in order to answer this one, I need to find the biography, which I found just erased over. Uh, biography and true crime. So 4 plus 4, that gives me 8. How many people answered the survey? So we're going to assume here that everyone only picked one favorite type of book. So assuming that, I'm just going to add up my numbers. 12 plus 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. And that should give me a really nice 30. Okay. So next we'll move on to the line graph. So the line graph is... Um, always shown as a time on the bottom. So we're looking at years as we go across here. Uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. So those are years. Um, make sure that when you're creating one, you're going in chronological order. I've had people where they're supposed to do months and they put them in alphabetical order. But think of this as an actual line. So timeline, you know, you're going um, bigger as you move up to the right. So you're going more into the future as you go to the right. So just make sure that it's in chronological order. Um, besides that, in the y direction, just like with bar graphs, you have to start at zero. And again, your increments have to be constantly the same. So I'm, again, I'm going by twos here. Um, so zero, two, four, six, eight. I'm not skipping any. I'm not jumping around. Another thing is that when you have multiple lines, so hopefully you can see we have two lines here, make them different. If you have different um, colors, that's fantastic. If not, make the lines themselves different. So if you notice, the blue line is solid, the red line is dashed. And also make what are called the markers different. So the markers for the blue, which is player A, are circles, and the markers for the red, player B, are squares. So what this is saying, is um, looking at the title, Touchdowns by Season. So if I look at 2010, if I go straight down for 2010, player A had five touchdowns and player B had eight. So for each year, I'm going to go straight down. Make that a little better. And you're going to have a marker for each line as you go straight down. And that marker is associated with a Y value. Okay, so you want to make sure that, um, again, when you're creating one, that everything is lined up. I've got two people, so I'm going to have two markers for each year. And then the height is going to be, again, usually a counting thing, so number of touchdowns in this case. 
Notice for 2011, they're on top of each other. That tells you they're the same value. So this one has the red on top of the blue. It could just as easily have been the blue on top of the red. Um, okay, so sometimes they will just be literally placed on top of each other. So again, we're going to have that same graph, and we're going to answer some questions. One, who scored more touchdowns in 2014? So we go to 2014. And look at who scored more, so which one is higher, and that happens to be player A. What season did they combine for the most touchdowns? So depending on what the lines look like, you might have to add them up for each one. So what was the total for them in 2010? What was the total in 2011? But hopefully we can see that it's going to be one of these three years. It's either 2013, 2014, or 2015. So I can ignore 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2016. And then add them up for each of them, and hopefully we can see that it will be 2014. So it just says what season. It doesn't ask what they combined to be. So just 2014 is the answer. Whoops. Gave away the answer there. That wasn't supposed to pop up. Uh, pretend we don't see that. Who scored more touchdowns and by how many? So in order to figure out who scored the, the more touchdowns and by how many, we need to figure out how many each player scored. So I add up all of player A's touchdowns. So we've got four, nine, nine, oh, sorry that first one's a five, not a four. Five, nine, nine, uh, twelve for the blue, fifteen, thirteen, and ten. And if we add all those up, we should hopefully be getting 73. And for uh, player B, which is in red, we add up theirs. And if we do that correctly, we should be getting 72. So as this over here says, but you can't read anymore, player A has one more touchdown than player B. And then the last type of graph is a circle graph, also sometimes called a pie chart. So we have here a circle graph for eye color. A couple of things to note about a circle graph. You have to include percentages. Okay? I don't care, at the moment anyway, about the number of people with blue eyes. I want the percentage of people with blue eyes. So the pie chart circle graph is all about percentages. You have to have percentages in there. The other thing is that the percentages have to be equal to 100%. So as you can see in here, you can have decimals. I have a lot of people who like to round to integers. Don't. Make sure you do include decimals. I would include at least two decimals after you've changed it to a percentage. Okay. And again, they have to add up to 100%. I've had people whose pie charts add up to 120%. I've had people whose pie charts add up to 70%. But remember, 100% is everyone, and you have to include everyone. So make sure at the end, add them all up. Make sure you do get 100%. So again, we can have some questions. So assume that 80 people were surveyed. How many have brown eyes? So in order to answer this question, the question turns into, what is... 42.5% because that's the brown of 80. What is 42.5% of 80? We can plug that into our calculators and we should get 34. How many have green eyes? So I go to my green, that's 15%. So what's 15% of 80? And again, we've learned how to do that. And the answer should be 12. And then lastly, how many have blue or gray eyes? So I can either find how many have blue eyes and how many have gray eyes and then add them together. Or I can find the percentage of people that have blue or gray eyes and then change it. So for blue, we have 25%. For gray, we have 10%. 
So together, that's 35%. So what's 35% of 80? And we should be getting 28. Okay, so again, when you're making the pie chart, make sure you have percentages. When you're using the pie chart, remember that it's just the basic percent equation. Okay, so read through the book, um, try out the homework, and learn if you have any questions. Thanks.